What's happening guys, Cooper Carter here for G66 and on this week's Fractal Friday, we're diving into Brad Delson's absolutely massive tones from Linkin Park's debut album, Hybrid Theory, probably my pick for the most crushing, greatest dual rectifier tones ever recorded. The late 90s and early 2000 aughts were a period of absolutely incredible recorded guitar tone. Really my pick for probably when recording of guitar peaked and it really hasn't gotten that much better since. You had coming together all of the influences and all the best practices that had been developed throughout the 60s and 70s and 80s in actual recording techniques along with the perfection and the really maturation of all of the technology. There were crystal clear signal paths. Everyone knew how to use the classic gear that had been a staple of studios for at this point several decades. Everything was just kind of firing on all cylinders. And you had bands that were moving into alternative rock, new metal, hard rock, and coming together with engineers who'd been at the game for a long time at studios that were just incredibly well outfitted to record guitar. And then of course, course, you had record companies still throwing massive budgets at these recording sessions. In the case of Hybrid Theory, all of those forces came together behind a young, innovative band who had just been handed a fat check from Warner Brothers Records to post up in NRG Studios in Los Angeles for four months and then have their album mixed by none other than Andy Wallace, the king of modern recorded rock and roll guitar mixes, in my opinion, whose mix featured in last week's Fractal Friday when we covered Nirvana's seminal Nevermind. Now, as always, this is just a quick video covering one set of tones, but if you guys wanna get the absolute most out of your Fractal Audio Systems unit, whether that is the Axe 3 the FM9, or the FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. Now, the stems for One Step Closer, my absolute favorite track off Hybrid Theory, are readily available online thanks to the Guitar Hero Rock Band video games, but I'm not going to be doing a direct tone match in this video. On last week's Fractal Friday, many of you asked, since you already have the stems for this tone from the record, the solo guitar, why not just run a simple tone match instead of doing all the work to manually chase the EQ? Bear in mind that stem tracks, by and large, come from studio records, and what works in the studio may not work as well live. The vast majority of the work that I do with Fractals artists is dialing in sounds to be used on stage. So almost every time that I've come to a session and we've had album stems, we've used them as a reference, but if we do a tone match and then we also manually dial in a tone just by ear, 99% of the time, we end up using the manually created sound anyway, because again, what sounds good on a record isn't always going to sound good live. Now, there are situations where tone matching is amazing. If you're a bedroom or a hobbyist guitarist and you love playing along to backing tracks and you want it to sound just like the album, or if you're a fractal artist who maybe is recording your entire back catalog over again and creating new versions of those songs, tone matching can be very, very useful. But since stem tracks are the result of razor sharp granular decisions made to make a tone fit into one specific album mix, I generally get more broadly usable, broadly applicable tones and tones that transfer into different environments more easily when I manually create a sound. Okay, so there are three main tones really at work here in One Step Closer. First off, we just have the main kind of rhythm sound which you hear under the verses. <laughs> Just a massive dual rectifier sound, uh, clearly double tracked and hard panned to each side. And then in the introduction here and then on the choruses, and again during this bridge section, you can hear that same tone, but then you also hear a, a bassier kind of sound come in, maybe a different mic or a different EQing, uh, and there actually are two additional tracks of guitar that come in. So it's quad tracked and those are panned as well. You can hear that best if you go from the uh, bigger sections down into the verses. You can hear those other guitars drop out. So let's check that out. And then, of course, we have the iconic intro tone here, kind of heavily EQ'd, almost telephone effect type sound. 
You can hear it again in these pre-chorus parts. And I love when that kind of clamped down EQ just explodes in the chorus. It really makes uh, an amazing entrance for those huge guitar tones that happen underneath the chorus as you're going from the more muted sound uh, into the much wider sound. So three main tones, let's dive right into them. The first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is add an amplifier and a cabinet block. And we're going to start with the Recto 1 Red Channel. There are two dual rectifiers modeled in Fractal Units. Recto 1 uh, is based on a more classic two-channel type dual rectifier. Recto 2 is the more modern three-channel type. I'm going with the Recto 1 Red. So let's go ahead and pick a Recto cab here just to start. I'm gonna hit the thumbtack button here and just type in Recto. I haven't done any tone shaping, of course, so let's just see what we have right off the bat. And I'm just gonna scroll through some of these rectifier cabinets. Starting with 57s, just cause that's kind of the classic rock guitar mic. And I'm just using the down and up arrows to scroll through these as I play. That sounds great. This is a Recto straight cab uh, from York Audio. Big shout out to Justin York. He makes some absolutely amazing IRs. So let's start with that one. We're just gonna go with one IR just to start and let's dial in this amp. I'm gonna first attack this verse tone because that's kind of the main sound. So let's just do a little bit of playing. I might usually use uh, the looper for a part when I'm dialing in sounds, but I'm just gonna play a little bit here. <laughs> Rectifier is an incredibly bassy, very loose amp by default, especially on the red channel. You'll notice if you go into the power amp here, there is no negative feedback loop in this amplifier's circuitry. So what you have is an incredibly loose, very bassy amp, which of course is exactly what we want for this kind of music. The new metal and heavy rock scene was heavily reliant on the dual rectifier. This really is kind of the sound of that era. What you get from having no negative feedback is again, a bunch of bass, a very loose amp, uh, but also you get a lot of distortion from the power amp itself for a high gain amp. High gain amplifiers usually are getting all of their distortion uh, or at least most of it from the preamp. With a dual rectifier uh, on the red channel, really anything above about nine o'clock, you're gonna start getting uh, distortion from the power amp itself. So you wanna make sure that you've got the master volume fairly low on this amplifier, and then you can use the level parameter here, which is a transparent level, uh, to get the volume that you want out of your preset. Uh, but if you start cranking up this master too much, <laughs> That amp just gets really flubby, uh, really farty. So I'm gonna keep it back down on three. And I'm gonna go ahead and wind the bass way, way down. There is still plenty of bass on tap with a dual rec when you've got it uh, that low. Take a little bit of mids out here. I don't wanna scoop it too much. And I'm gonna jack this treble up a good bit there. One trick to tighten up these looser amplifiers is we can go into the preamp page here and turn on this input boost and then just set it to the T808 uh, modeled after the tube screamer type. Uh, and that's gonna tighten up everything, but also kind of saturate the amp a little bit more. So you're giving it more gain, but you're not letting it get super loose and run away with you. <laughs> really just gives it that incredibly aggressive chunk. That's sounding awesome. 
So again, bearing in mind that we have no negative feedback in this amplifier type, the impedance curve of the power amps interaction with the speaker is going to have a huge effect on your tone. So we can cycle through some of these various impedance curves to see how they affect the feel and the sound of our tone. So let's start on this recto large here. You notice this big spike right around 100 hertz. We change down to the recto slant, that becomes less noticeable. The recto small, even less so. The recto straight, it jumps way up and moves down to around 70. This is the low frequency resonance, the chunk, the balls, the low end, whatever you wanna to refer to that as. We have the ability to really dial in exactly how we want this amplifier to react with the speaker cabinet. Now keep in mind, this is really only possible in fractal land. In the real world, you would need to have all of these cabinets and then plug into each one to decide not only what sounds good, but also what feels good, which one responds best to your playing. We can keep this same impulse response here that we've picked, but then manually adjust how the amplifier interacts with the virtual speaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and thumbtack again and just chunk and scroll through these and listen how much of an effect this has on the feel and sound of our amplifier. Very loose. A little tighter. Let's go back up to this straight. That sounds absolutely sick in my opinion. So let's go back to our cab here and just do a little bit more exploration with some IRs. I really like how this one is working, but I wanna add a little bit more dimension to the tone. Let's go to the picker here and type in recto once again. And just scroll through a couple of these mics and see what sounds good paired with our 57. <laughs> You know, oddly enough, I actually really like how that sounds with these two different 57 IRs. That might not be a traditional way of doing it, but the 121 was sounding a little dark for what I wanted to be doing. Pretty killer. What I wanna do though is go ahead and add in a parametric EQ. Just do a little bit of post EQing here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, of course, I mentioned that I'm not doing a literal tone match on this sound because I tend to get more broadly usable tones, especially for live use without the tone match feature. But that doesn't mean that we are limited to tools that we would only want to use in a live environment. Because this is Fractal Land, we can go ahead and get a little bit of that studio engineered sound, uh, which of course would line up better with the stems from the record by adding some studio tools. One of the most powerful studio tools that mixers have in their arsenal is of course the outboard compressor, something you don't usually see in guitar rigs. A lot of the times in a guitar rig, you'll see a compressor in front of the amplifier, but let's go ahead and add a compressor after the amp and cab here to really make the guitar tone leap out of the speakers uh, as it does on a record. So if we turn to the stem for a second, you can hear this rhythm tone on the chorus just really explode when it hits. So we want that kind of leap that comes from a little bit of outboard compression. So let's go ahead and turn to the Studio FB compressor here, one of my favorites. I'm going to raise this threshold up a bit and jack the ratio up. Let's set a more aggressive knee here and then I'm going to jump down to RMS peak. So here we have, without the compressor, a little bit uh, more muted, a little bit kind of spongier sound, and here we get a little bit of that whipping sound. So this is exactly the kind of tool that a mixer like Andy Wallace, for example, may have turned to to get these tones to jump out of the speakers a little bit more. We can also capture a little bit of the magic of the mastering process by adding in a multiband compressor as well. A multiband compressor allows us to discreetly compress three different sections of our tone based on these crossover points so we can compress different parts of the EQ spectrum. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and compress the lows a little bit more than they are now. And I'm actually gonna lower this crossover point a good bit. That is absolutely ripping. Bear in mind though, that on the record, this first tone is double tracked. So we can go ahead and add a pitch block in and turn to the same tool that we turned to last week on Fractal Friday during our Nevermind Tones, the Mimic type pedal from TC Electronics that I have mimicked in the Fractal here. Uh, and this just gives us a, a little bit more of a double tracked feel. <laughs> Obviously not something you would want to use when tracking guitars necessarily because you could just go ahead and manually double track for real, uh, but this is a great effect for use live or when you're playing by yourself. We've got two additional voices here uh, panned 75% left and 75% right. I am thrilled with where we are on our verse tone. Let's go up to scene one here, our intro and pre-chorus. If we switch over to our stems, we're looking at this type tone now. <laughs> So a little more limited sound, much lower gain, and kind of again, the telephone sort of effect. I'm gonna copy this amp channel A up to channel B. We'll use channel B for this intro pre-chorus sound. We're gonna use the same cabinets here, and we're gonna keep this compressor and this pitch block off because this part is not double tracked, and we don't necessarily want that kind of aggressive snap that we have uh, on the verse tone. So let's go ahead and lower this gain down so that it's not quite as heavy. Maybe a little low. Let's take out a little bit more of this bass here. Cool, so I think that's probably good right there. Let's turn to this PEQ though, and on channel B, we want to really scoop out some of this tone. Let's set a shelving type EQ here and pull this way, way down. Just cut out all this low end. And then same thing on the top here. We're just gonna gain down all of this. A 
There's a little something missing though. We're gonna need something right around somewhere in the six or seven hundreds. We'll see. Let's just gain this up and uh, we'll see where it is. That's about it. Very happy with that. So let's switch up to scene three, our chorus and bridge tone. This is gonna be the biggest tone of them all. We go back to our stem real quick here. We have this massive bridge section. Huge, loose, gainy, absolutely massive and crushing. I absolutely love it. So we're gonna keep this same big amp channel here. We're not gonna gain it up at all from the verse. What I am gonna do, since there's another guitar track in the chorus and the bridge added uh, that has a good bit more bass, I'm going to copy channel A to channel B. We're gonna switch up to channel B here on our cabinet block. And what I'm gonna do is go to this picker and replace this other 57 to capture that heavier low end that we're hearing in the chorus and bridge part. Since this is an additional guitar part, I wanna keep our original IR and just add on to it. <laughs> Actually really like this legacy IR from the old school Axe FX. Uh, this is a mix of several different mics uh, and it's giving me what I want out of that sound. So we've got our verse amp doing double duty here on the verse and the bridge since it does really sound like the same tone is happening there uh, in both parts on the album, but we're adding in an additional IR to bring some more balls to it. I'm gonna keep the compressor and the multiband compressor and the EQ where they are, but I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb here because when this chorus hits, I wanna just open up the tone just a little bit. Now we're not gonna go crazy. These kind of heavy metal guitars uh, tend to do better without any reverb or very little reverb. I'm gonna go with the studio reverb here, bring the mix way down, and then I'm gonna lower the time down a lot. This is kind of uh, my favorite trick to add a little bit of ambience to a sound without getting too heavy, so. <laughs> Kind of sounds like we're in a studio room. And just adds a little bit of width, a little bit of space, really opens things up. Subtle, um, more of something that you would kind of feel than hear uh, in a full mix, but very important part. The final step here would be to bring back in this pitch block for more of a double tracked sound. <laughs> But of course, we already have that working on the verse. So let's take it to the next level. We're gonna copy channel A to channel B. I'm gonna go up to channel B, and then all I'm gonna do is just hard pan these additional voices, full left and full right, and then bring this mix up from 30 to, let's say, 45. So now, as we go between the verse and the chorus, everything opens up huge. <laughs> capturing more of what I think I'm hearing as quad tracking on the choruses on the album. So now let's switch between our three different tones.
hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to G66's channel and leave me a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you would like to see on a future Fractal Friday. I am very excited about next week's episode and the one after that, so stay tuned for those. And as always, if you guys want to get the absolute most out of your Fractal Audio Systems unit, whether that's the AxeFX3, the FM9, or the FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. For all things Fractal Audio, keep it right here on G66, and I will see you guys very soon on Fractal Friday.